guys, it's Austin. Welcome to your 12th Roblox with scripting tutorial. Today we're going to go over yield functions. So I'll just dive right into this. If you don't know what the word yield means, and you should know what the word function means, but if you don't know what yield means, that just means to wait or stop. So what a yield function does is uh, it delays what it's about to do until it returns true or false. I'll just leave that up there for you guys. So <clears throat> they're usually written sort of like find first child. I mean, I don't know why I said that. Built in functions uh, with a colon and then parentheses on the end. Uh, one is wait for data ready so you see it set up sort of like a built-in function so you might get those two confused but as long as you know what they do individually that doesn't really matter so today we're gonna go over wait for data ready uh, and what else okay For child is in group. Uh, I think that's it. <coughs> this is a page of all the yield functions on Roblox. I provided the link to these sort of pages for events and built in functions, so I'll put this link in the description of the video for you guys who want to see this. Uh, use it as a reference, whatever. So these are the three we're, we're going to go over today, the three most useful. Uh, I suppose. I don't know. You guys might find different uses for them, but I think these would be the most useful for your purposes right now and the easiest to understand. So, oh, I should add colons there. Just because I'm picky like that. So, like I said, they'll probably look like built in functions and they function similar to that, but there is a distinct difference between them because built-in functions perform a task immediately and they're made for something specific. All these just wait for something to return true or false before they run. So I'll give an example. Uh, let's say we're setting up leaderboard stats and we wanted to say, you know, game.players child added uh, connect function and we'll use the parameter player because in the child added event the only valid parameter is whatever child is being added to whatever you're referencing I think I went over that in my event videos I don't know uh, and we wanted to say local leader sets equals instance dot new model parent it to player leader steps dot name equals leader steps because we want to give it a name uh, local chaos instance dot new int value leader steps okay nah I'll just say kills kills dot name equals chaos of okay there we go <coughs> so here we have handy dandy little leaderboard set up on the player leaderboard kills and death the leader stat model went inside our player that was added to players and the two values kills and deaths went inside leader stats. Leader stats can be whatever you want, model and value, but this is not a tutorial on making a leaderboard. So I'm just gonna get on with my point. So say a player just joined the game and their character's hardly loaded yet and there are no force fields in this game and 
someone's just happened to be standing right by where they spawned, and uh, they spawn killed this dude that hasn't loaded yet. Uh, it probably wouldn't add to their deaths if he hasn't completely yo loaded yet. That was a bad example because you wouldn't want something added to your deaths anyway. Uh, I'll just explain the first one. Wait for data ready. So, since this is a player and wait for data ready needs to be used on a player because you don't need to wait for the data to be ready to manipulate on anything else. Uh, yeah, this will work because of that. What wait for data ready does is it waits until a player's data is ready to be manipulated until whatever continues, um, whatever below functions. So say you had a data store that set up leader steps and saved them. You would have to wait for the player's data to be ready to manipulate before you started saving or even setting up the leader board inside the player. So these are pretty much just, these two are pretty much just precautionary measures. You'll see what I mean later. They'll, they'll come in handy, definitely. So yeah, this is just one way player wait for data ready could be used. They're also almost always used in data stores, like I said, because if you ever want to mess with the player's data, you need to use that to make sure you're doing that correctly. Uh, wait for child. This is a yield function that waits for a certain child to be added inside of something. Uh, not necessarily to be added, but to be loaded. Look at that page on the wiki. Yields the current thread until a child with a given name is found, then returns the child. Yes, yeah, so not necessarily loaded, just found. Sort of like find first child, except this is a more secure way. Uh, the word thread might be confusing to you guys, but that's just in what order functions inside of a script run. I'll probably get into that later when I go over coroutines, which is probably way later. Um, moving on. Wait for child does not listen to name changes of existing children. For example, yeah. So, can't rename stuff. Throws an error when called on objects not in the data model, and data model means game, meaning the parent of all these services. And some study part wait for child, child name. Yeah, so that's how you use wait for child. Uh, say we had a brick, brick equals game dot workspace wait for child part. So I have to use quotation marks and then the name of whatever you're waiting for. Brick dot brick color equals brick color dot new red red. And it changed it to bright red. So this say you just had a have a really laggy game and you just said game.workspace dot part that might not work in, in case the script runs before that part's loaded so again wait for child is just a more secure way of usually using variables defining variables because of that Ugh. so the last one we're gonna go over for today is in group if you didn't infer already, this yield function checks if a player is in a certain group before whatever happens below runs. So say we have the same brick and uh, we'll say it's a big group door. That's a good example. You could use is in group for group doors. Uh, we'll move this inside. We'll make it a touch function. Script up parent touched connect function. Uh, hit 
pretty sure we would have to get hit up parent. No. Where is this at? Checks whether the player is in the group given in its argument. Using this in a script as opposed to a local script will not get you the most up to date information if a player leaves the group while they are in the game. Is in group will still think they're in that group until they leave. However, that does not happen when used with a local script. That's because the local scripts update uh, with the client because local scripts perform whatever code is inside client side rather than server scripts, which <coughs> perform it server side. So that's a known glitch with um, group functions or group doors or is in group, whatever. I mean, a lot of people a few years ago used server scripts for those kind of things, so if a player left a group in-game, they could still get through a group door by if the coder used a server script. Uh, I don't know. But, yeah, I probably shouldn't use this example because then I would have to use get player from character to find the actual player who touched it rather than just their character. So... I'll just say, um, yeah, game dot players player no added function if player is in group uh, one. That's like Roblo, huh? Yeah, I think the first group is Roblo Hunks. I don't even know. Then print yes. And it obviously will not print yes because this player is not in any group. I'm not sure if that's just because that player is an actual player, or just because I wrote that wrong. In fact, I'm pretty sure it actually goes by the user ID of my avatar or character. I'll say else uh, print no, because my character is not in that group. Yeah, no, because it goes by my user ID sure that's somewhere in there. Yeah. Okay, no. Ah, oh, whatever. But, you see how that works. It checked if the player who joined was in the group with an ID of 1, and it would print yes, else it would print no if they're not. Uh, so the parameter for is in group, obviously, is the group ID that you're checking. It can be anything as long as it's a valid group. And I suppose that's all for today. If this helped you at all understand your functions, please like or subscribe. If you have questions, just post in comments or message me in Roblox at Recurring Nightmare. Until next time.